Hi everyone, welcome back into the Academy. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Warren Bennett. We've got this fluff ball called Trev. I'm sure you're gonna see him bouncing in and out the, uh, the screen during this video, um, which is all about trying to find that one thing that cures the four things. And I've got a really good one here. This move is all about how we keep our spine angle, but there's a, there's a steering wheel behind keeping your spine angle. There's a catalyst behind keeping your spine angle, which is absolutely paramount in consistency. I've got a seven iron here. We'll put a club up my, from the bottom of my spine to the bottom of my neck. You can see my, that is my spine angle. And we're trying to keep it relatively similar throughout the whole golf swing, because if we can keep that spine angle relatively similar, it allows our arms and hands, and then obviously golf club, to uh, swing on plane around it if we move around and up and down, we're in real trouble. So remember a golf swing, we're allowed to move laterally, but the more you move up and down, the harder it is to get this club on plane and back into that golf ball squarely. So these two videos I put up about Mo Norman and Lee Trevino, they probably did it as well as anyone in the history of golf, because what we're after is this club to be coming into the ball as square as possible, under speed, but, but with kind of no manipulation that you out of the way, bud. Come on, Trevor, do you want to lie down? Oh, good boy. So the transition, so where the club is kind of coming down into the ball from the completion of the backswing, you really want to be driving a little bit lateral. So you want to try and keep everything as shut as possible. You don't want to open up too quickly here, right? So the first feeling is getting some weight shift onto our left leg and into our left foot. So you can see from the behind view, I'm quite shut here, and I'm keeping some flex into my left leg. Now, that's giving us some momentum to bring the club down without us thinking about it too much. But now we're in a position, what's called posting. We're now posting around our left leg. So what I mean by that is to basically get your left pocket behind your heels. So, and pull this club back to the ball. Pull this club back to the ball. In and pivot round. So you can see now, it's exaggerated, but you can see now what that does. That keeps flex in my left arm. That keeps um, some compression into the ball. As you can see, I've still got lag. So you can see my hands are ahead of the ball. It's really putting me into a position that's really going to produce some power without you knowing about it. Because what you don't want to do is get your pockets and get your, your backside going towards the ball. Then that's going to limit the amount of room you have with your arms. So you're probably just going to have to flick it. Squat, pivot. And you can see through impact, you can see the great players of the game are in this kind of, this is extremely exaggerated but you can see it keeps that spine angle. The more I pull my left pocket back, allow your right to spin out as well. Don't keep your right foot on the floor, you bust your back. But you can see it keeps my head over the ball and it keeps me what's called in the shot. So let's hit a few shots. We're gonna load, it's kind of a simultaneous feeling. As Soon as we go load, we're gonna pull back and stop short. You can see my right foot's right up in the air. It's exaggerated, I know. But what you don't want to do is pull and keep your right foot on the floor, you hurt yourself. So nice and smooth, not a full swing. We're going to load and pull back. Load and pull back. And you can see I'm really keeping holding that angle, not allowing this flick to happen. It's all about control of club face, no rolling. Squat and pull back. Because I'm doing a short back swing, it's hard for me to do a full squat into the ball. There we go. I'm going to just go on to make a full backswing-ish just to give me some more time to really get in this squat look here. Really into my left side. That's what's what called using the ground and pull up. There we go. And that pulling effect, that's why you need that first transition move, that pulling effect pulls that club back into the ball loading into the left side, keeping this bent, allows this right elbow to fall in front of you, allows the elbow to sit in front of your, of your body, not behind it, 
And then from here, that pulling keeps that right elbow into the body. So it keeps connection, because now you've got connecting, now you're connected to the club by your right elbow and your body. So, if, so really, that's what these great players worked on back in the day, especially the Hogans and the Normans and the Trevinos. They kept hold of the club. They never let the club flick. So they all had control of the, the amount of roll this club face was doing. So the more they can kind of pivot, the more they've got hold of this golf club by their elbows still into their sides. So ramp that up a little bit and let the follow through go. Because remember, this follow through is a bit more of a slingshot effect. So from here, as much as you're trying to hold it, you can't, you've got to let it go. Got to let it go. Because we're only really dealing with kind of hip height to hip height here, everyone. So if you're unsure how to do this, really smooth and short, really short. Really pull that left hip back as much as you can. Pull that left hip back as much as you can. Look how in the shot, I'm actually lower into the ball than I started. What you don't want to do is lift. How many times have you heard someone say, oh, I lift it up? The result, the reason behind that is probably they've just like pulled up and they've straightened their back. This does the opposite, this pulls you under and into the shot more. Look how low I am. It's exaggerated, I get it, but shows you how much control because you've got now the right elbow into your side and that golf club can't pull away from me because I've got hold of it. So whatever I do, the golf club's gonna react. Oh, it's hot in here. Right, okay, let's do a few full shots. I'm gonna let this follow through go now. Let my arms slingshot down the line. Load in, pull. Oh, that was compressed. How far did that go? 170, not bad for an old boy. Let's see if I can, I've got a bit of a dodgy back, so I've got to be very careful here. But weirdly, it looks like you're kind of contorting yourself a little bit here, but it's not. I've kind of, there's no pressure on my back at all. It's weird. There's more pressure if I thrust up here and stop and flick and stall. Stalling and flicking, that's going to hurt me. If I'm rotating and pulling, it looks like I'm, oh, that looks like you're, you're playing twister. But honestly, I'm not. There's no pressure on my spine at all. So drill, you can slow down. If you're unsure, slow down even more. Because remember, any drill, it's not an exercise, it's not a distance exercise. And then you can speed that up. Speed it up. Remember, you don't have to do it perfectly, but you're really focusing on these two modes. Wait for as long as you can to pull that out. Don't do it from the top of the backswing, because you'll spin out, probably slice it. But you're trying to delay the pivot as long as you can. And you do that by kind of slowing down, waiting for it, that's another little Comment you might have heard, statement. Wait for it. Pull. See if I can blend it. Nope, hit it heavy. Yep, you can see lost distance there, 151. As you can see, I've got the flight scope running behind me. I'm gonna feel like I do that quite well. So I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna put more emphasis on this left pocket now. Really get this way. Oh. Now that must have been my best one distance wise. Woo, 177. Two more. Let's see if we can get to 180. What's the club head speed? 86.7. Sounds like a radio station. I'm trying to get the compression and the slingshot to hit it further. Here we go. Oh, hit it heavy. Oh, I remember I'm an old boy with a bad back at the moment. 160, that shows you what strike does if you hit the ground. So what that's telling me, the strike is telling me that I need to work on my pivot more and trust that I do the loading bit. That's why it's difficult to blend two feelings up in the transition. So I'm gonna trust that 
and leave you with this 180 yarder, so he says. Right, pull back, keep in the spine angle. Not bad, a little thin. 182, yes. So it just shows you, there's always a catalyst behind it because what you want to try and do is forget about all this stuff. I'm not trying to control this club face, but hopefully let your mechanics and your spine angle, this video, do that for you. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate all the support. Love doing all the videos. Hopefully this will help. If it does, please let me know. If it doesn't and you need a question answered, I'm here to answer it as best as I can. So until the next time for myself, and I think Trev's bored of me now and he's going to sleep, um, we'll see you on the next video. Have a great golfing week, everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.